In Luke chapter 1, starting in verse 11, we get this, this eyewitness account of God answering a prayer. Maybe a prayer that seemed hopeless, maybe a prayer that seemed like, like it may or may not happen, but we get to see this, this eyewitness account of this, this actual prayer being answered. And here's how it goes. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was startled, and he was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. And he will be a joy and a delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. My daughter, Sawyer, she loves uh, Happy Meals. She loves McDonald's. And she's always asking whenever we get in the car, Daddy, can we go, can we get McDonald's? Can we get chicken nuggies? I want my, my apple slices, I want my toy. I even, I want the box. Make sure you ask all of those things. I need that, I want that. And you know, we we typically, you know, if we're going somewhere, we're out around lunch, we'll go, we'll oblige, we'll get her her Happy Meal, and she is, she is content. But it's interesting that sometimes with a four-year-old, they don't appreciate it as much as you'd like them to. Like they don't appreciate the fact that, hey, I've taken time to sit in this drive through that's taking probably way too long. I'm spending my money for this meal that is probably not all that healthy. And I'm giving you what you want in this moment. And very rarely do we hear Sawyer say, thank you, because <laughs> she's four, right? And it, it just doesn't, it doesn't rise to her mind to say thank you all of the time. She does, but, but sometimes she misses this moment and she doesn't, uh, express gratitude. She doesn't rejoice when she gets the thing that she's been asking for. And I think sometimes we do this. We miss the moments where we can be grateful, where we can rejoice, where we can be thankful for what God has done. How, how, how often have you taken the time, have I taken the time to rejoice, to be uh, grateful when our prayers have uh, been answered? When that thing that we're pleading for God to come through on, when that thing that we're trying to find a resolution to, when he comes through and he gives us a clear answer, when he gives us a solution. If you're like me, if you're like my daughter, half the time we miss it. We don't even remember necessarily what we even prayed for sometimes, right? Like we just throw up those, hey God, uh, man, I really need you right now. Or God, I, I need... Um, I need you to help me with this math test, right? Or I need you to help me with, with this situation at work. Or, or we throw up prayers that are, hey God, give me a safe trip. Give me, um, you know, great weather for this hike I'm about to go on. Or God, thank you for this meal. Thank you for what you've done for me. Forgive me, uh, you know, for what I've done wrong. And we just forget even what we've, what we've prayed for. What a miracle. Like what a great blessing it is that, that we can have God's attention at any moment, but that we can also expect him to respond. Like that's a blessing that we have his attention and that we can expect him to respond to us. But also like what a slap in the face it must feel like. And we've experienced this from, from, from friends and family and, and other people. What a, what a slap in the face it must feel like when we don't even notice when he gives us what, he, what we ask for, and when we don't even notice that he's answered. In Luke 17, a little bit later in this, in this uh, eyewitness account of Jesus' life, uh, Jesus encountered people like this. He heals 10 lepers, but only one of them, right? One out of 10 come back to him and say, thank you. It's a Samaritan. And Jesus' response is like, we're not, we're not all 10 cleansed. Like, wait a minute, I thought I, I helped 10 people here, but just one of you came back to say, to say thank you? He then 
extends grace to this man. He says this, he says, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. And I look at this and I think for me, that the implication is, is that the leper is now not only physically well, but spiritually well. The rest of the lepers, they missed out on this extra uh, and, and probably most important part of this healing because they didn't go back to rejoice. They didn't go back and, and, and display gratitude. They didn't go back and celebrate what God had done in their lives. They just took and they left. They didn't get to experience the immense joy of eternal freedom because they didn't take the time to acknowledge the gift that had been given to them. They didn't take time to celebrate what really, really, truly had been done for them. So my question for you, my question for me, is when's the last time that you've noticed that God has answered a prayer of yours? And what was your response? What was my response? Here's what I want us to do. I want us to take this, this, uh, this next month and each day just write out your prayers. Write out what, what you're asking God for and then spend the time, mark the day that you've prayed that and then spend time looking back over it and seeing where God has come through for you. Don't pay attention to all the moments that he hasn't or that you don't think he has or maybe he's been silent on it, but pay attention to where he has and, and take that moment and give thanks and rejoice that God is there and God is listening.